Good morning, folks. We've got several things to discuss today. We've got news on climate, pre-earthquake signals, and space weather relating to the magnetic pole shift, but we've also got geomagnetic activity, and we are starting, as always, with the last 24 hours on our star. Solar flaring was lower, but the confined flaring at the southern active region continued. There was a compact eruption on the eastern limb. We had a brief but strong geomagnetic storm, and more solar wind disruptions are likely on the way. You can see the flaring at the southern sunspot group, and luckily nothing like what happened on the incoming limb. Plasma outburst there aimed 90 degrees away from the Earth. But the big story here at Earth was the late arrival of CMEs that ended up causing a KP7 level 3 geomagnetic storm. The solar wind wasn't anything outstanding, modest density, mild plasma speed enhancement, causing a strong disruption to Earth's magnetic field as seen here on the GOES magnetometer. The geomagnetic storm didn't last long but rose to level 3 and caused brief but strong induction of geoelectric effects which you can see here on the US and Canada monitoring network once again. Eastern US and West Coast take the hardest hit and the new valley of the sun is spared most of the strongest effects. What's more is that this week event was late, meaning it should have been less impactful. In fact, the impacts timed at the pink lines were about an entire day late. Folks, once again, this space weather event should not have produced such a geomagnetic storm, and there was no prediction past KP5 level 1 storm conditions. We're going to come back to that. We'll be watching the solar wind as well for more CME impacts and the coronal hole enhancement from this dark opening there on the left. It's expected to arrive late this coming week. I hope you caught last night's video because it is a major opening in the climate game, and I mean major. We'll get part two out to you this weekend. First article on the docket today hits that same category, suggesting that the scariest predictions are off the table. We hear this over and over from the peer-reviewed papers, and yet the doom and gloom from CO2 never seems to go away in the mainstream narrative. It's not real. Good paper up next on pre-earthquake signals from the big Nepal quakes of 2015, both total electron content of the atmosphere and the outgoing long-wave radiation anomaly showed clear signs that a big earthquake was coming. I will once again suggest that after hundreds of papers like this, maybe someone ought to be predicting these quakes based on the data. Last but not least, folks, we not only have evidence that the early 2023 geomagnetic storms caused significant disruptions to the ionosphere that then propagated into the lower atmosphere, but this is exactly when the major pole shift acceleration occurred, triggering the auroral records last year and several unexpectedly strong geomagnetic storms kind of like what happened yesterday. We'll hit that topic in a special video soon as well. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.